Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden, but we're going to head a little bit north this time and we're going once again to a little town on the banks of Lake Vettern called Muttala. But this is another brewery who I have never had anything from before, so I'm quite curious to see how this beer turns out. For this one then, we're going to try my first ever beer from Force Brewery, and this is the Caribbean Stout coming in at 8% ABV. So I guess you could see this as an Imperial Stout, but definitely one of the lower ABV ones that you're going to come across in this particular style bracket. This beer was released on the 1st of November 2019. I'm not sure whether it was in the Yuldriker or the local and small seat assortment through say Stembolagat, so I actually don't know, but I'm going to consider this one another beer in my uh, Yuldriker um, winter mini series that I've been doing for you over the last couple of videos. But as I always say, cool to introduce you guys to another small Swedish brewery, and uh, some of these breweries can really throw up some very interesting beers so hopefully this is going to be one of those and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Force Broigery very first time I'm trying one of their beers as I mentioned there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about the brewery then before we taste the beer. So as I mentioned earlier, Force Brewery are based in Muttala, which is a little town on the banks of Lake Vettern, kind of on the northeastern side of the lake if you like, but the company it was founded by Patrick Force, who obviously it's named after, and he also works as a home economics and consumer studies teacher, if I'm giving it the proper title. Um, but he'd been home brewing for a number of years, and he gained access to his building in the summer of 2015, and apparently this building is a part of a an old like dam power station or something like this. It's quite an old um, nice looking little brick building if you look at the pictures on the website. But for the first few years it was just brewing very small batches of 200 litres and this gave them a total production of only around four to 5,000 litres of beer per year. But apparently they're a bit more active in the summer because Motala is quite a popular summer town. I mean right on the lake there's a lot of towns like that in Sweden that come to life during the summer. Um, but the, their beer can mainly be found in the local system Lagets and the uh, the pubs around the local area but you can order them nationwide now from what I gather but they also offer guided tastings at the brewery as well and also some brewery workshops as well and I guess if he's a teacher that's probably a good place to to go and do it actually so yeah kind of interesting I wonder if he teaches his kids to brew actually um, but as of November 2019 they've produced around 30 different types of beer and there's quite a lot of variety within those different styles there there was IPAs there was stouts I'm sure there was a few porters and things like that in there too but um, an interesting little brewery this one and uh, the other thing we should say about this one too is that Prince Katz Brewery or Prince Katz Kvartels Brewery I can't remember the exact name but Prince Katz also brew their beer in the same building as Force Brewery so um, yeah because that was the thing when I got a hold of this beer I thought I'd reviewed one from this brewery before but it was Prince Katz Brewery actually so um, yeah an interesting little brewery this one if you get the chance to try some of their beers as I always say give them a go and see what you think but um, yeah that's all you really need to know about Force Brewery for the moment that was all I was able to find on them if you want to learn more check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on Facebook Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and of course you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages as well to uh, see all the different beers that they do. So yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. As I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is an 8% Imperial Stout, although it's only 8% so some people might debate whether it's an Imperial Stout or not, but um, yeah, it's kind of right on the borderline. So yeah, really nicely presented. This one you can see the piracy symbol there and there is the um, force brewery symbol on the back there. I quite like that, it's the little hop flowers and things, it's quite tasteful. But it says a full stout that is um basically made with the flavours of the Caribbean rum, coconuts, chocolate and vanilla. Um, the, roast, the dark roasted malt gives you a taste of cafe, um, let the taste kind of, let the taste make you wish of. 
brewery uh, the brewer for so yeah so um it says on the back here um this one the the water in this one that's quite funny actually vatten from vetum so yeah vat uh, lake vetum um but yeah it's got doesn't actually say that it's got coconuts in it, but this one does have lactose. So I'm wondering in some ways if this beer is maybe modelled, if you like, on the Dragon Stout from Jamaica. I'd be curious about that because, oddly enough, I didn't know it until I reviewed that beer and people were commenting. But apparently it's a lot more common to drink stouts in the Caribbean than you might think. So I would be curious to know whether this beer was inspired by the, the Dragon Stout from Jamaica. But a really nicely presented beer, this one. I do like the artwork on this. I'll need to take the label off it. But, um, yeah, cool plain red bottle cap on this one so without further ado let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste and I think this will be a really nice Christmas beer actually so um, yeah as you can see a little bit of smoke on the opening there's a little bit of sediment in the bottom so I'm guessing this beer is um, bottle conditioned but it seems to be behaving itself you have to watch sometimes with bottle conditioned beers because they can just decide they're going to explode and it's very annoying when they do that and you're doing a beer review but this one seems to have behaved itself. Still a little bit of sediment on the bottom there and I'll tell you something when you go up to that bottle you really can smell the coconut and the lactose coming out of this beer but that's good because it does what it says on the bottle. So um, yeah as you can see with this beer it's poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood kind of colour. If we shine the light through that there's nothing getting through that. This beer is black as night. Um, you know, there's not even a little Coca-Cola coloured edge to it apart from on the very rim of the glass if you like. So yeah, this is one of the darker Imperial Stouts or Stout beers generally that you're going to come across. Um, so yeah, it looks really nice. You could see when we poured the beer there was quite a dark tan coloured head on this one but that's just faded away to be pretty much nothing. There's just a few little frothy bits on the top of the where that head should be there. If we sugar it up a little bit you do get a few bubbles kind of reappearing, but yeah, sort of medium tan head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of the head there, or where the head should have been. But overall, it looks pretty much as you would expect from, uh, from a stout. I guess this one, um, just going by the aroma that I detected earlier, I think this is probably going to be quite a sweet stout. As I say, I suspect perhaps modelled on the Dragon Stout from Jamaica, or some other kind of one that I've not heard of from the Caribbean. But um, yeah, let's take a look at the aroma then and see how we go on. Nothing overall particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. So yeah, straight away with this one, it's the lactose that jumps out at you. Um, you can smell the coconut um, being quite infused into the whole thing here. Um, so yeah, maybe a little touch of a woody kind of note to the beer as well actually. So yeah, lovely big lactose notes. A little bit of kind of coconut infused into that. Definitely some milky chocolatey qualities as well. It did say on the back of the bottle that they'd actually added chocolate to the beer, although oddly enough it didn't say they'd added coconut. So maybe they're using coconut flavour essence or something like that. And probably in fairness when you've got the liquid chemical rather than the the um, the um, what do you call it? The actual stuff. Sometimes it can infuse into the flavour of the beer. Yeah, the, the beer a little bit better. It's the rule of chemistry. You know, liquids uh, better surface area than solids generally. So yeah, that's why that's why they use flavour essences and stuff. Um, Learn something useful in my chemistry master's degree. There you go. But um, yeah, lovely smelling beer. That the the milky chocolate in this one really comes out beautifully. It it, it reminds me. I don't know if you get them in Sweden actually. I've not seen them. It reminds me of a bounty bar. Bounty chocolate bars back in Scotland. I never liked those particularly, to be honest. Um, my mum used to love them, but I never really took to them. But the coconut, lactosey, and milk chocolatey flavours that come out of this are really, really very nice. Um, I don't really get any rummy notes out of this. There is a little bit of brown sugar in there, but it's not like a kind of sugar cane -y type thing that like you might expect from rum. Rum is a sugar cane based spirit, of course. Um, but it's got. Um, it has just a little bit of a kind of sweet caramel note in the in the the back of the nose as well, but mainly it's the lactose, the milk chocolate, and the coconuts that are dominating the aroma here. There is a little bit of a woody undertone, like I said, um, and overall that aroma is just absolutely lovely. A very very sweet smelling stout actually, so I think we are going to get a big sweet stout out of this one. Uh, on the hoppy side of things, you can pick up. A little bit of earthiness and grassiness, but there's not too much of a hoppy presence to this beer. On the fruity side of things as well, it's quite, um, you know, it's got a little bit of a kind of, how would you say, it's got a little bit of a kind of raisiny note to it, maybe a little bit of a kind of 
black currenty, blackberry sort of thing, some figgy notes as well, those juicier ready berry type fruits, uh, fruits and a little bit of raisin sharpness in the beginning. So um, yeah, it's an interesting aroma that, definitely a sweet stout rather than anything else. So um, yeah, it actually reminds me of that terrapin stout that they used to sell in Seastem I forget what brewery that was. Um, was it Turtle Shell Brewery or Terrapin Brewing Company? I think it was the chocolate milkshake stout from Terrapin Brewing come to think of it. I'm sure that was either from Alabama or Georgia in America. But um, yeah, interesting brewery that one actually. That, or that stout was one of the best ones that I reviewed. But one of my favourite stouts as well was the, um, the Riptide from Brewdog back in the day. And this beer to some degree reminds me of that as well. So yeah, a lovely sweet aroma coming out of this one. As I always say, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. That's always half the experience when it comes to craft beer and sake and whiskey and stuff. But yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Caribbean Stout from Force Bruggery in Motala, just on the banks of Lake Vettern here in Sweden. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull. That's pretty nice actually. The thing that's surprising me about this is it's actually, and this is it's quite a common thing actually on some, with some Nordic beers, the um, it feels very very clean and it tends to be the case that when you go further north um, in Norway or Sweden that the beers, the quality of the water of the beers makes them feel a little bit lighter actually and you can get that. The quality of the water in here is obviously very very good. But it's a nice, um, kind of, it really is a nice drinkable stout, this one, actually. Um, it gets a thumbs up from me, this. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. And I would say it does remind me of the, the Dragon Stout. A nice, sweet, drinkable stout, that. If you ever get that a chance to try that beer, the Dragon Stout from Jamaica, I forget what company it is that, um, that does that, but that's a, a really interesting and very unusual beer. This one, I think... I've got a feeling that that's this is that is maybe what's inspired this beer, as I said. But that's a well done beer, actually. You know, thumbs up to Force Brewery for this one. Let's try and break this down a little bit then. So, um, in the middle of your palate, you can feel a little bit of that roasty toasty quality in there but that really is very quickly smoothed out by the lactose it's a very very smooth quite sweet beer this and um, the lactose you know it's blanket that whole part of your tongue if you come a little bit further forward that's where the vanilla kind of sweetness comes out of the beer and you know the whole thing feels as if it's infused a little bit with these um, woody flavours the sort of woody undertones which is quite nice um, and that's that whole smoothness and slightly sweet character that really kind of um, fills the whole, you know, makes the, the centre of your palate in that beer. You can definitely pick up, it said on the bottle there was a little bit of um, oats added to it, and in fairness you can get a little bit of the oaty creaminess out of this as well. If you focus on the very centre of your palate you can feel it's a bit thicker there, and that'll be the oats that are giving you that actually. Yeah, that's a really solid stout this actually. I mean for 8% it's remarkably drinkable as well actually. It does. It, it reminds me a little bit of the, the Brewdog Riptide as well. To be honest with you I would be interested, it's interesting that they chose to release this one in November or something and I can see why they did that because obviously you know Christmas is the time for the big imperial stouts and the barley wines and the scotch ales and stuff like this, the big heavy beers, the doppel box as well and the quads and things, um, but it would be, be interesting for them because this this is a, the Caribbean stout is intended for the summer, it would be interesting to see if they released this in the summer, but like I say, it's, um, you know, probably for the Swedes I guess, the sort of, the, the, it's not a beer style that they would associate with the summer and indeed it's, it's quite a surprising thing to learn that the Caribbeans would actually drink stout, so I get that, but it would have been an interesting thing for them I guess to release this either earlier in this year or later next year, but this is a good beer. I mean, what I would say about this is it is a bit of a shame if this is only going to be a, like a limited edition one. It's a bit of a shame because it is really well done, to be honest. So, yeah, 
Mulberry's, like I say, um, it's got a good little bit of complexity to it, this, actually. Um, the one thing I would say about th this beer generally, it's an impression I'm kind of building up, it is a little bit light in its mouthfeel, and that was what I was leaning towards earlier, when I said the water is very clean. This is a beer that perhaps it could... In some ways, you could get a little bit more out of this if you thickened the mouthfeel up, but then again, if you do that, you take away the idea of this being a Caribbean stout, because the Caribbean stouts are lighter in the mouthfeel. So in some ways, this beer is a little bit like a kind of... Um, sweet porter to be honest with you it's got a little bit of that kind of porter like mouthfeel but in fairness it does have the kind of um, it's got the lightness of the porter but then the kind of smoothness that you would expect of a um of a stout actually so yeah it's in, it's interesting that it's an interesting little point to think about the beer on the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate you've got a little bit of earthiness there that smooths out really quickly as you move further forward along the side of the tongue. You've got a nice little bit of floral aromaticity on the front corners of the palate, then around the very front curve of the tongue it's a little bit lighter and more grassy. Then behind the front curve of the palate it's a little bit... Uh, that's where you'll get that little kind of oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters come out of the beer. And it's kind of similar to what you would expect from the aroma. It comes in a little bit sharp and raisiny and then it just smooths out and becomes a little bit more juicy. So yeah, when you take this beer in, you'll get a little bit of a sharp kind of raisin here. It's not quite cherries, it's maybe, what else could it be? It's, it's like quite sharp and raisiny or plummy or something like that. There is a little bit of sharpness there, but then you feel it. The, the, front, the very front tip of your tongue, it just smoothens out a little bit. You get a wee bit of a more figgy kind of note coming out of it almost. The figs come a little bit further into the aftertaste though, I would say this one really leans a little bit more towards the black currenty, blackberry sort of things. I'd be curious as to whether they've used a little bit of Williamette or something in this, but then again, if it was Williamette, it might be a bit stronger in its floral qualities and things, but then that also depends on when you add the, the hops in the brew actually, because you can add them after the last half hour or whatever to get less bitterness out of them and things, and again, that depends on how long your, uh, your boil actually is. But um, yeah, the 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 the, the 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 way that the fruits come out in this is quite nice. It does have a little bit of sharpness to it and juiciness, which is quite nice actually. So um, yeah, um, another thing I'm noticing with this beer too is that the further you go into the flavour, this one, the more you drink of it, you do get a little bit more of a kind of brown sugary note in the middle of your palate too, and it's almost just like a kind of slightly toasty, caramelly sort of thing actually, which is, is really quite nice. So um, yeah, you'll notice that a little bit more. I didn't pick that up right away, and you do start to get a little bit of the, the black malty notes kind of drying out in the middle of your palate as well. But in terms of its flavour profile, this is really quite nice. As I say, the thing that's a bit unusual about this beer, um, especially if you've not tried like Dragon's... Um, the Dragon Stout or whatever from uh, Jamaica, you know, you're not used to a stout being this light in its body, but it's certainly still full of flavour and there's nothing wrong with that. So probably if you blind tasted this beer without knowing what it is, um, you know, it, you would maybe think that this is a porter rather than a, a stout, but it definitely has the sort of smoothness you would expect of the stout beer. I love things like this that make you think about the, the borders between styles and stuff, actually. It's always an interesting discussion to have. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, so yeah, like I said, I mean, it's definitely light bodied for a stout, but it's a Caribbean stout, so yeah. But um, overall, I would say that this beer is probably at the top end of light bodied, maybe bottom end of mid bodied. It's kind of in that sort of region. Carbonation is very, very smooth. The mouthfeel has a degree of um, oiliness to it and creaminess and with oats and things in it, you're going to expect that. But at the same time, it's also quite wet and it feels quite clean. And that's probably due to the water quality. That's one of the things you'll get in the Nordic countries. We have it a little bit at home in Scotland as well. But with the um, with the, the sort of hoppy and bitter side of things then, um, I would say that this beer, in terms of IBUs, I think you'd be lucky to get about 25 IBUs out of this. This is a very low IBU beer, I think. Um, the malt base has a good balance between that smooth creamy note you, you're getting out of it, a little bit of a toasty quality and also some sweetness as well. The coconut really lingers into the aftertaste along with the woody notes. You get more of these kind of undertones 
a bit later on. I'm not really getting the rummy flavours out of this, like they were saying, but definitely a little bit of a kind of milky, um, a mil definitely a kind of coconutty, um, lactosey, milky chocolate type thing. That's what really lingers into the aftertaste with this one. So a lovely balance between smoothness and sweetness and creaminess as well in the malt base there. And the fruity side of things, as I said, is a little bit sharp in the beginning, but then it smooths out and becomes that little bit more juicy the further into the aftertaste you go. But I mean, overall, this is a really quite nice and quite interesting beer. So if you get the chance to try this one, I recommend that you do. And if you want a kind of original to compare this to, Dragon Stout from Jamaica. I've said that a few times in the video, so yeah, check that beer out. I'm not sure if that's available in Sweden right enough, and I've not seen it in years. But definitely a beer that's quite interesting to try. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for the flavour profile of this one. This is a really nice easy drinking stout. It's a bit easy drinking for 8%, um, but if you like a sweet stout, I think you will probably uh, enjoy this one. One of the lower imperial stouts that you're going to come across, pretty much right on the borderline if you like. So um, yeah, interesting one to try this. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this beer. As always, let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Force Brewery as well, and do give me some other brewery names and stuff from that Motala kind of area. There's, I know there's quite a few things up there, but it's always cool to get more brewery recommendations and stuff from you guys as well. Do let me know if there's any other sort of Caribbean stouts like this in Sweden too. It's difficult to keep up to date with what all the different breweries are doing because there's about 400 of them now in Sweden. But um, yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Uh, and I will catch you guys very soon. Check out my social media, check out Forced Brewery, and uh, if you get the chance to try this beer, I think you will quite enjoy this one. A really interesting one to release at Christmas time, I think. So yeah, until the next time, it's Slangy just now, and I'll catch you guys later. This one is the Caribbean Stout at 8% ABV from Force Brewery in Motalat on the lakes on the edge, on the banks rather, of Lake Vetton here in Sweden. Slangy, skull, cheers. <laughs>